All right, everybody, this is Rusty from Possum Bayou on YouTube. Today I'm putting out a video, basically kind of showing how I did did my layout or some of the bench work on my layout. I've done some of it this way before. I have some shelves underneath this thing. I'm going to show you kind of how what I did and, well, what I did but shouldn't have done. But that's a whole other thing. Whenever you see me say, hey, don't ask me how I know I'm a genius. Well, I done found that out by the scientific method. I did it wrong the first time, sometime or another, and I was trying to avoid a situation with receptacles, ah, which I really didn't do, due to I put my boards on the wrong side of the, the line, but that's okay, it'll be all right, I got another one in there I can use, there's more than one, one receptacle to each wall, so here's a video on how I've done everything. Okay, I took one of my I guess you call it a table or part of my layout out here to, let's say, upgrade my legs, so to speak. I'd set up on a little table here for a little workbench. There goes Crazy Cat right there. And I got something I made out of more or less some stuff I'd found scrap here. It's pretty nice stuff. I'm going to upgrade it a little bit. I got some tuba threes that I bought. The main thing is the way I have these made, it's going to be a little more difficult to put a shelf in there on, on the bottom part of it like I want. Another little issue with this thing is from the bottom down here to the top is about a quarter of an inch difference that I have from the top here to the bottom of here. Now, the th good thing about this you can turn, twist these, and level it. So that's not a problem with that. But I want to put something else on there because it's a little on the flimsy side with that. But it's got a, it's got a nice tabletop, so I'm going to go with that. And they're just screwed in. So, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do with it. Walk out here. Hey, Raven, what you doing? And I got these tuba threes. I'm gonna make legs and I got a OSB for some a shelf on the bottom. That way I can store things under it. And about a year ago I went out and bought me a brand new truck, a little splurge there. Kind of a nice little truck. It needs wash today, but it's pretty neat. Anyway, I'm gonna get back to work over here. And my daughter calls it my girly truck because it's got glitter in the paint but hey gotta have when you gotta have it you gotta have it huh now i got the legs off of it that's the next step if you look i've used pine on here and this is a is something that is more millwork gray pine something you would actually if you wanted to make some kind of cabinets or something out of it's a high grade of even though it's pine it's a higher grade of pine it's been a little extra money on that to do this so and I made sure all the corners were square I mean square and this is thing is 24 inches wide or two feet wide and it's more than four feet long that's how come I have the two by four foot piece here and you have the gap in here it's that much difference between 48 inches and what that it actually is and a little put these pieces on here with a brad nailer and wood glue high quality wood glue it's going to be here a while so best thing to do is with something like this put some better legs on it like i did the one i did yesterday i did some measurement when you're taking your measurements write them down on something a note tablet or a piece of scrap something i wrote it on a piece of scrap drywall i had laying around and this is existing height at the top of the foam and the top of the plywood. Well, that's more like, that's but actually that one come out to be right in the middle of three sixteenths and a quarter. So basically by looking at this, doing the math here, knowing what kind of foam I use on it, that's a pretty close approximation of what I have. And like I said, I used the bottom of my table to do my figuring, so... 
Always write it down because if you don't, you'll end up kind of, what was that exact measurement? You'll end up back in the house or back out here. And I'm working on my carport. It's not a, you know, it's January. It's a pretty nice day and I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's not so bad. And I always use you a, a decent measuring tape. And I like to use the bright colored ones because that way I can find a measure if I lay them down when I'm working. And now the next step is going to be to figure out the length of this legs using this information and I'm going to have to figure out exactly what I'm going to allow for the leg levelers that I use. Well, let me get back to it. Now here's what I did. I measured from the top of this to here and I've about an inch. I also measured it with it all the way down and it's a half an inch. Now that give me, I've got mm, roughly a half an inch play one way or the other. You know, if I cut this thing, my, my other, this leg here, and I allow for just that half an inch, well, if I go in the house and it's too tall, I have no way to adjust for it. I can't make it shorter. So I'm going to have to split the difference between there. Let's say instead of either adding, taking off an inch from this new leg from 36 inches. And if I take a whole inch off, I don't have any play if it's too short. So I have to have it in the middle. Because these things, you only got like a quarter of an inch either way on these. So you got to be, not spot on, but you got to be fairly close. And you always got to deal with your floors may not be exactly level regardless. Now, my floors in this house, even though it's 80 years old or pretty dead gum, pretty dead gum level, believe it or not. It's got a crawl space and all, and it's, I got oak flooring, and it's got two levels of subfloor under it. You know, the, the old tongue and groove at a 45-degree angle in two different directions. So it's pretty stout. But however, we'll split the difference between them, you know, just... Instead of allowing for a half an inch or an inch, it's still allow for a three quarters. And that's going to give us enough play in there to raise or lower a little bit if it needs to be done. Okay, now I figured out that I was going to take three quarters of an inch off my measurement of 36 inches, which basically you got here. I, the plywood was 36 inches of an inch. So this four, it's quarter inch plywood, and after it's been dried and everything to kill, it shrinks. Then you got 36 inches. Now I'm going to take three quarters off of it. So what you do is start out 36 inches and do the other thing. I got to borrow one, which one is equivalent to four fourths, which put over here, which makes that 35. Four fourths minus three fourths is one fourth, and you got 35, 35 and a quarter. Real simple. If you write it down, you don't forget it because two minutes from now, I'll forget it. Are you ready me to turn it on the skill saw? I don't think you want that noisy thing, do you? <laughs> She'll run off as soon as that thing turns on. She likes to follow me around when I'm doing stuff, whether I'm inside or outside. Yeah, then what I'm going to do is get my measurement, my 35 and a quarter here. And basically, all I did was look it on the end. Sometimes you may want to, with some of these boards, they say, you know, take your saw and square it up on the month. But this one I check with my little square, and it's pretty good. I always double check that it. In reality, it doesn't make a whole lot because I'm going to use these levelers anyway, but still. And I've had this thing probably 40 years. And it's, you really need one of these here when you be marking your lines out. Because basically, just, I'm going to mark out my 35 and a quarter. Just right about here. Pretty close there. All right. Not exactly. <laughs> it's close enough to using that leveler. Kind of using my phone. And basically, you just get up on the line and scribe the line across with a pencil. Kind of hard to do that one-handed, so I have to just kind of show you what I'm doing here. Now I've got the line in there, so now I'll be able to follow that line with my saw. Well, I have my legs cut right now, but I did make a little bit of a boo-boo. When I was setting up this saw, I didn't make sure that was completely zero so i cut two legs and found out, ah crap i got a bevel i don't want so i had to cut four 
so I had to start with that. But I got knee bracing on this thing anyway, so not a total loss, but always double checked it. I used it yesterday, and I guess when I set it down on the shelf, it kind of kank. So there we go. Now the next step is to drill the hole in it, the end, one of the ends, so the little leg lever can be installed. Well, I was selecting out what I was going to use for more or less a lever. I think I'm going to use these 5 6 inch carriage bolts. I've used these before. They tend to hold up a little better than the other little things because they got a little decorative cap on them that if that thing ever comes loose, you're not using You can't. You have a heck of a time tightening or loosening it. And I keep all my little fasteners like this in this handy dandy little thing I picked up at Harbor Freight. It wasn't that much money. It's like I can keep up with all this kind of stuff in that. But only got two of these, so I got to go to the stove and get some more. Now you can see how <clears throat> do these are laid out to find them the center. No, nah, not perfectly centered, but close enough. And here's what they did. You just drive these down in the bigger hole. I have to hold. Since I'm doing this one hand, I'm gonna have to hold the bottom with my feet. Down. See it walked over a little bit. It's not real important. Going in, you can... you can back it out a little bit. Thing is, you get all that wood build up in the closet. Okay, now we started off with that, the pilot bit, and then I'm gonna go to the three eighths bit. Makes it much easier to drill if you use it, drill a little hole first for the little bit bigger bit, especially if you're having to hold it with your hands. Now I'm using the 3 8 drill bit. See how it likes to catch even with a pilot hole. And the excess wood out that way. I'm going to go a lot of the length of this drill bit into the hole. Next step is just dust that off and stick that in there. And then just take your old hammer. There you go. Ready for the carriage bolt to go in there. Now, how I'm doing this, I am clamping that leg to the actual top. Just use this just to make sure. I got it that way. And we're looking okay that way. So now I'm going to go and drill a couple of holes here to center them on this. This is going to hold this. So you're not trying to hold it and you get it off, get it out of kilter and all that. Makes it easier to do, especially when you're working by yourself like I am today. Now, just a couple of minutes ago, I used my drill bit to drill a little hole for these to go in. Okay, I'm trying to do this way. Good enough there. There we go. Usually long enough screws to go a good bite in there, but not enough to go all the way through because you don't want to pick this thing up later, moving around and find out the screws are out there and cut your hand. Uh, don't ask me how I know that, I'm just a genius, all right. There we go. Now that I have all my legs on, I'll show you. On my drill bit, I mean my drill, I set to put these in after I put a pilot hole in there. I set the torque to southern. And if you don't do that, if you just drill it through the wood, you'll probably end up having to use nine. But I recommend, especially on the ends of these, pre-drill that hole. You won't have any problems. Now, these holes are from something else. I over torqued that one. See how it split? Hope I don't have any issues late, but I don't know that I will. And the next thing to do is to put something between here and here, a little brace. Okay, get that 
to the inside, the inside of here. Got to get it in there lined up. Looks to be it's about 19 and a half. Now I measure it down here because I want to make sure if I can need to pull these legs in, I can get them pulled in. Plus, this is going to be part of the, what holds up a shelf that's in the bottom. Now, I went inside the house and I measured from the floor how far I would need to raise this up, this shelf, to avoid blocking my receptacle. There's nothing like putting a shelf in here with these one by threes or whatever, one by fours or whatever, and you get in there and all of a sudden, uh oh, one of your plugs you can't plug in or you can't access the receptacle at all. Now that's how I know that. I'm just a genius, I guess. Yeah, look what I got here. Now I've measured from inside to inside here, which I come up with about 45 to 45 inches. I've cut my pieces already. Finally broke up my handy dandy expensive toy there makes a lot when you're doing this it makes it a lot easier to cut yeah i tried that i've done some with one by on that all this one by stuff on here i've done with that the other little miter saw hand my i did that but these are a little thicker and i'm just kind of want to get this done then we'll put one back there and i'm going to put some cross bracing in here too between it and the next one i'm not real sure if i'm gonna have one one there or put two in it I'm not sure yet i'll figure it out See, there's a few. So I measured that to avoid that receptacle. And I'm going to clamp it. Both sides. While I put the screws in. I'm working by myself. Maybe if I wasn't, I wouldn't have to do that. But I think I may have to readjust that a little bit. All right. So I'll drill the hose in just a second. See how I got the cross bracing in here? Once I blocked everything up, put it in here, pre-drill my holes, put my screws in. Now I use a lot longer screws, three inch screws to hold this up. Whereas the others I was only using two inch. These little clamps come in handy, especially working by yourself. See, I could hold it up and I actually had one on all of them. As I went around, just knocked the holes in them, put the screws in them. Easy peasy, like a third hand. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a one by three. I'm gonna try to do that across the length of these. Maybe I'll check into a two by three, I don't know. Let me see what I have on hand. And get that done. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick with the, the two by threes like I did yesterday. Got an idea, yeah. They'll be laid flat like this across there, but I'm gonna have to run the screws this way. There we go. So I'll be working on that next. All right, now that I've got this, see where I've got it. Still got it upside down on this little table here. I'm just giving it a level I can work on. It makes it much easier. I've got this. I've picked the center of this and the center from that end to that end on the inside. Boom, it's there. Put a couple screws on each side. And we got it. And now what I'm going to do is measure for the shelf that's going to be in here. It'll be actually sitting on the bottom side of this. Now what I'm going to do is measure just inside of there. To the other side just inside of there but i gotta allow we'll have to use my circular saw and cut like a notch where these one by threes are it's pretty easy laying out first i'm going to cut it that 48 inch piece to length to fit there which will be pretty close to the length of it i imagine then i'll have to rip it to fit on here but if it's four I may not have to do any of that. I may just have to end up cutting this. I'm not sure. But I don't really want anything overhanging any of that. So, all right, let me get to cutting this thing out and get back with you. I took my measurements and 48 inches long is going to be fine. But it can, it's only going to be about 22 and 3 eighths inches wide. So what I did was measured back three and a half inches so I can run my skill saw along this on both ends and clamp it down that way I can just run right along that little board. All right, now let me get my skill saw out and get to it. Well, I'm done with the cut. 
nice straight cut down the length of it. Now all I got to do on the corners is cut the notches out, which I'll probably do with this little hand saw I got here. It's going to be a lot easier and quicker just to do that maybe. I may just use a skill saw. It'll be about as quick. So here we go. Let me get the notches in it. Well, there's the finished product, more or less. I, I already had made this a while back. Got some one by, looks like a one by four there. Now, since this thing was 52 inches long or whatever it was, 50, 52 inches long. Now, I really didn't have to but notch a little out of this, but I notched a little bit more. That'll be okay for what I'm doing. And I have also the support in the middle. All I do is kind of screw it down on there with some shorter screws. Don't need all that. Be storage on top, storage on the bottom, high enough off the floor that it didn't block a receptacle this time. <laughs> all I'm going to do is eventually possibly do some one by threes on that. Hands over here to kind of decorate it up a little bit and then put a little face over the front. And it's ready to be attached to the rest of the layout in there as I go along. Got to have some sort of pencil to mark your lines with. The shape of this thing has some distinct uses. Uh, use a circular saw today. Call it a skill saw, but this one's a Craftsman circular saw. And a 3 8 drill bit. And a 1 8 drill bit. And I was using this drip, Bell Archer drill bit for the little levelers. But I think I would have been a little bit of better, tighter fit with a 5 16 But it, it's going to work. So then, got a hammer, hammer, tap stuff in place. Something to write your stuff down on. Whether it be a notebook or a piece of scrap or whatever. And got to have your screws. Uh, and I keep the drivers in here. While I'm working, I'll put my drill bit in here when I'm doing the pilot holes. That way, I keep it all right in there. G tape measure, clamps, that's what I use to hold the blocks in. I have some other clamps I was using too. I'm not real sure where I have those at right now. I've already put them up. And then, trusty old square had this thing forever. And like I said, the hammer I've had a good while too. And we'll put these on the heads of those carriage boats that are in the legs. And then you got this miter saw here. Harbor Freight Special. Works pretty good. And like I was saying when I was cutting that this morning, I didn't pay attention to this adjustment right here. And I cut them. Quack, quack, quack. And there they sit. Basically, I wasted a 2 by 8 I mean, an 8-foot 2 by 3 I'll be able to use them on some other projects I got coming up. And then... The top where I had the mill work or the one buys, I when I done that a few months ago, I cut it with this. Actually, I made it a year ago. And a nice little table to set everything on. You work on the ground. The little table, that's what I had set the uh, table, my layout on whenever I was attaching all the legs. Well, right there, you see it sitting in there where it goes. I've attached with some shorter screws the shelf in there. If you look back there, I didn't quite get my measurements right for my shelf. What I should have done, well, instead of like the top of the shelf being where the line was, I should have made it bottom of the shelf was where that line was. I had, I think I made the right measurement. I just, when I turned it upside down, I think that's where I got my stuff wrong. Okay. Trainer's kind of junky and everything. Now here's my old one that I had. It blocks an outlet in there, but I got one I can get to that's on the end of it back over there by the door. And I'd made this one yesterday. See the shelves and everything. It makes a handy place to put stuff and that'll talk taking stuff off the top of here, put into there, and, and I got stuff I can put there and I can clear up other areas. See where that outlet is, about the height of it there with that shelf that's what i was talking about i can get to that one which is i really don't need that many outlets to get able to get to i got another one on this wall over here behind me 
it had this like out like that too so I can dodge it later all right so this is kind of what I was trying to avoid but I didn't hope you enjoyed the video just kind of show how I was doing some things things going on I've done some more of those already so I'll be able to sooner or later of course by that door over there where I was showing where that receptacle was I got to do something there but that's I'm going to show what I'm going to think about on another video right now I'm just trying to get this video complete as you see I had issues with this and that and if you're not paying a real close attention like where even though I'm major measurement I put the the shelf kind of on the long so bottom side of the line maybe instead of a top side that might would have helped I think I may even center it I'm not even sure but now it, I can get to the lower thing in that duplex with separate, but I can't get to both of them it's going to be hard to even get to that lower one but I do have other ones in the room that I can still get to I just have to I think I'm going to have to just drop it below that now that I got room to put taller stuff and that's really the thing I want to put like compressors and taller things like shop backs and all underneath all of those. And I got enough room to do that. So the next I can just either make it a lot higher or a little lower. Basically I don't like it too high because it takes away from the what I'm saying is like it's being an added bracing or something. But like I said, well I'm not done that today, that thing is really solid. So basically I could have done it with the one befores or one of threes I've done in the past, but those two by threes were half the price. And they worked real well and they were pretty straight they, they were pretty nice things so you never know what you go when you're going and looking for things but i did make the mistake with the one cut with the saw on the wrong angle yeah so that's four four and a half bucks kind of wasted but i can still use what i have even though all that stuff that went in the, the legs and the bracing and all that were just three pieces of wood three three you know three eight foot pieces of two by three so didn't really need the fourth one, man. Little brain dead on there. Boop. Oh, I messed up. Okay. But anyway, just look out for some other videos. This was fun. It's a nice day outside. About 62 degrees. Really nice working. It's kind of like working outside in air condition. In late January, South Mississippi. That's just kind of how it is. So just keep you out for some little videos. And check the last two I did out. One of them was an old scale layout in Mississippi Gulf Coast Mall Railroad Museum. And the other one was a G scale layout. They're really uh, detailed, really nice to look at and watching the video. So just keep watching. I'm going to have some more how-to videos. I'm going to have some more of those of different videos of different model railroad clubs that I've been around the country in the last few years. So just keep stay tuned. I'm going to try to keep my videos coming this year, as I didn't last year. So just keep watching for Possum Bayou to come up with some more videos. Just keep watching, and I'll see you later.